Howdy. My name is Nonat, and I've been playing Pathfinder 2E for about 10 months now. And in the past 6 months or so, I've begun to slowly dabble in the world of homebrew. Even in a system as diverse and deep as Pathfinder 2E, there's still stuff that doesn't exist or doesn't fit the perfect niche you're looking for for your game. But that's where homebrew comes in. The problem is that Pathfinder 2E's system is designed pretty differently than other D20 style systems. With its unique action economy and sharp number scaling, it's difficult to know what's balanced and you don't want to accidentally make something super overpowered or completely underpowered and useless. Due to all of that, homebrewing for 2E is really, really difficult. Luckily, today's video is part one of a seven-part series where I'm going to teach you how I go about homebrewing my Pathfinder 2E games. Each subsequent video will be going over an even more complicated topic, starting with today's going over simply magic items. The source books we have access to have some really cool magic items, but they definitely don't have everything you might be looking for. Luckily, magic items are probably the easiest thing in the game to homebrew. So here today, I'm going to go over my three main strategies I use when designing unique magic items for my games. Additionally, I'm going to be crafting completely unique magic items that you can steal for free and use in your Pathfinder games if you so choose. There'll be links in the description to PDF versions of all of the magic items I'll be creating for you here today. They are yours to use as you want. In fact, in all seven parts of this series, I will be creating an example of what we're talking about, and every single thing I create will be free use for you, your friends, your family, everyone you're playing Pathfinder with, all completely free open source. And finally, right before we get into my actual strategies for making magic items, you guys know what time it is. You know them, you love them. They're less than $2,000 away from their stretch goal. I'm going to give y'all a look at Beetle and Grimm's Complete Character Chronicles. On a real night of gaming, you bounce from a core rule book to the advanced player's guide, and of course your character sheet. But what if? We created a single book specifically tailored for your character class with a massive character sheet to record every detail of your hero. And then took all the official Pathfinder rules, spells, feats, and skills that you need for your class and your class only and combined that with an expansive journal to capture your story. Character sheet, rule book, journal, all in one. The Complete Character Chronicle is live on Kickstarter now. When it comes to building magic items, I have three distinct strategies I tend to use. The spell effect, the general boost, and the unique effect. The spell effect is definitely the simplest and easiest to use and is almost always my go-to. This usually boils down to granting the user of the item a free use of that spell. Now depending on the form of the item I pick, the rules may change slightly. For example, in one of my patron campaigns, I've given one of my players the Gloves of Rockfall. This just lets them cast Pummeling Rubble at first level once per day. Simple as that. It can grant a caster an extra spell slot per day specifically for that spell, or even give a martial character access to a little bit of magic every day. It's a super simple magic item with a plethora of good uses. Now, if you wanted to imbue the same kind of effect on, say, a weapon, you could get a little more creative with it. Rather than simply letting the wielder cast Pummeling Rubble, make it more of a unique action. Perhaps, once per day, if your previous action was a successful strike, you can use one action to instantly cast Pummeling Rubble in the direction of the target of your last strike. The effect is still the same, casting a first level Pummeling Rubble, but it's been made a little more powerful because it only takes one action to cast it, but it's been given some restrictions. You have to hit with the weapon first, and it can only be cast in the same direction as your strike. Restriction and reward are two of the biggest things you can play with when it comes to magic items. I try to always utilize the form of item that I have the magic stored in. So if it's a weapon, I tend to make it effects that trigger on attack. If it's armor, maybe it's something that triggers when you get attacked. Something like that. It just makes the item feel a bit more natural, a bit more alive, and much more memorable. Really quick, I do just want to take a hot second to plug my Patreon. If you like what you're seeing here in today's homebrew video, I think you'd really dig the content on my Patreon. 
at least once a month, I release completely original Pathfinder 2e homebrew, separate homebrew from what you're seeing in today's video. So far, I've already released a unique magic item, as well as four unique subclasses for the Cleric, Ranger, Rogue, and most recently the Druid. If you're interested in checking them out, you can unlock them all instantly by pledging as little as $5 a month. This gets you access to all past content and all future content for as long as you're pledged. With this video series focusing specifically on homebrew, expect to see even more homebrew content coming your way, patrons, very soon. Thank you for letting me plug my stuff, and a huge thank you to all 44 of you amazing patrons. Thank you for your constant support. Next up, the second strategy, the general boost, is a great way to give a character a small, but mostly permanent, bonus. An easy way to go about this that always goes well is to give them a ring or amulet with resistance to a specific type of damage. Like an amulet of fire resistance that grants a flat 5 resistance to all fire damage. It'll always be useful no matter what level they are as long as they don't have a better amulet to wear, even if they're level 15, being able to reduce all the damage they take by 5 from fire damage is never bad. It also just lets that character become even more unique compared to others. You know, that ranger now has fire resistance. Other rangers don't normally get fire resistance. Resistance is easy, but once again, don't be afraid to get creative. Something like a plus two circumstance bonus to damage against a specific type of creature is a really cool way to give someone a powerful bonus that only affects certain encounters. Just be careful not to go overboard. With these kind of permanent bonuses, oftentimes less is more, especially depending on how specific the bonus is. Also, as a little GM tip, try to wait a few sessions after your player gets the item to send an enemy or encounter that makes use of it. Give them that amulet of fire resistance, and then wait three or four sessions, and then send the fire elemental after them. The reason you want to wait like this is because if you give them an amulet of fire resistance and the very next encounter is against a fire elemental, they'll think, oh, this is why he gave me the amulet. All right. But if you wait just the right amount of time, that thought process becomes, wait, I have this amulet of fire resistance. Yes, I can't wait. I get to try this out. Finally. It makes the amulet feel more like an optional item they gained and can now make use of, rather than an item you already knew they were going to get and already had a use for. It makes it all feel less mechanical and much more natural. My final tip with general boost items is to find a way to power them up as the campaign progresses. Maybe the party finds a magical blacksmith who can imbue that amulet of fire resistance up to the next level. Or maybe they encounter a magical forge whose flames fly into the amulet, powering it up from inside with the power of fire. I'm going to be saying this all series, but always get creative. And my final strategy for making magic items is also the most vague. I typically save this strategy for if I want to make something completely unique and never done before. Thus the name, The Unique Effect. The hardest part of explaining this strategy is that there is no strategy. But this does let me segue into one of the most useful and helpful tools when it comes to homebrewing. Stealing! Coming up with something 100% unique is incredibly difficult, some might say impossible even, because everything has been done before. But steal something twist it and tweak it just right, and it can look 100% unique. Look at magic items in other books, in other game systems. Take their effects, tweak them, combine them with other magic item effects, and bam, totally unique magic item. Going even further than that, don't be afraid to look at other classes and make an item that almost functions like a mini multi-class. Maybe the party finds a sword with tiny holes drilled all the way through the blade, and whenever they swing the sword, a whistling song is played, and everyone around the wielder starts feeling more courageous and powerful. Whenever the sword is swung to strike, it casts the Inspire Courage Bardic Cantrip. Now you should nerf it in some ways. I gave it a max range of 15 feet instead of the cantrip's normal 60, and I also made this a level 7 magic item for a level 1 bard effect. 
But just like that, if the party doesn't already have a bard, the fighter can now play that song while striking, granting him and some nearby allies the effect. And even though the party doesn't have the bard, you're getting access to those benefits. You could even give this weapon to a bard, and then they can strike and cast Inspire Courage in the same action. Now, it should be said that you should be very careful when doing this. If you gave this item to a level 1 fighter, you would have an incredibly powerful, imbalanced character. But giving it around level 7, maybe even higher, would be a nice balance, you know? They're high enough level that this effect is fairly minor, but it's still a really cool effect that diversifies a character's gameplay style. Also, try not to rip class features from classes that are already in the party. If the fighter does wind up with this bardic longsword, and your bard is just sitting there in the party, well, the bard's gonna be a little bit salty about that. Try not to let your characters acquire magic items that let them do things their party members can already do. In an ideal campaign of a role-playing game, everyone in the party feels unique and powerful with their own strengths and weaknesses. Customize their magic items to their playstyle. If your players are all about political subterfuge and intrigue, give them some items that buff their diplomacy, their stealth, or maybe even give them some charm effects. If they're absolutely battle-hungry, feed them. Give them some healing items, give them damage buffs, or let them have magic items that inflict conditions on their enemies. Pathfinder 2e is loaded with cool conditions. Give them to your players with unique options to inflict them on their targets. And those are my three main strategies when it comes to crafting magic items. Obviously, you can do a whole lot more, but we'd be here all day if I went over every possible thing you could do to make a magic item. Just never be afraid to think outside the box. Campaigns don't just need to be bags of holding and plus one weapons. There's a whole world of creativity out there, and your imagination is the only limit. Aww. Well, that in game balance. If you're interested, every item I've shown on screen here today is available in the description as a PDF. Shout out to PF2 Tools and their amazing homebrew creation programs. As I said, I'll be creating totally custom homebrew items for every single video in this series, culminating in a completely custom class in the seventh finale video of this series. So if that sounds like something you'll be into, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a video, hit the like button because that tells YouTube, hey, I like this content, maybe other people will too. And hey, please leave a comment in the comments below telling me about your favorite magic items, your stories with magic items, or even custom magic items you've been making yourself. I really want to hear it. I want y'all to know that I do read every single comment that gets posted on these videos. I don't have time to answer a whole lot of them, but trust me, they all get read. Even the mean ones. I'd like to give another huge shout out to my patrons, as well as Beetle and Grimms for sponsoring the channel. I'm gonna be really sad when I'm not saying their name anymore. They're less than $2,000 away from their stretch goal, y'all. Let's push them up and over. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and until next time, no nat ones.